Okay, it's definitely time that we finally get some stuff animating and moving around on that screen. To start with, go and grab the Pygame base template out of the example folder. If you go to the game examples, then down on Pygame graphic examples, you'll see the Pygame base template. This is the template that we want to use. Just go ahead and double click on it. Don't do the click and drag because that doesn't work very well. Just do two quick clicks, double click, Control c to copy, and then go ahead and paste it into your program. First thing I want to do is create a rectangle. I'm going to have that rectangle end up bouncing around on the screen. So with this base template that I've got, I'm going to put all the code that should draw in between those comments and keep that together, and I'm going to draw a rectangle. When I run this program, I should get a rectangle that is at an X and a Y location of 5050, and a width of 50, and a height of 50. Just happened to like the 50 number today, and it actually happens to work fairly well for what we're doing. When I run the program, I can see that I've made a bit of a mistake in putting a white rectangle onto a white background. So let's go ahead and close this out. And I'll make this black. Go ahead and run it again. Great, now I've got a white rectangle on a black background. Our next step, rather than always drawing the rectangle at exactly 50-50, is to create a variable that will hold where we want the rectangle to be drawn. So if I've got a number that's going to end up changing from time to time, I want to create a variable. I'm going to call this variable rectx, and to begin with, I'm going to set it equal to 50. And I will replace the x value right now with rectx. When I run this program, it's going to appear just like it did before because rectx is 50. It replaces the rectx right here with 50, and I still get my rectangle drawn. It's not moving, but I'm getting set up so that I can make it move. There you go. Still just like what we had before. Now the key is to take rectx and modify it each frame so that it increases. One way we can do that is to just take rectx here and do a plus equals one. So each time through, it should add one to rectx. Now, if I go ahead and run this, do I get my rectangle to move? No, the rectangle doesn't move. And this points out one of the most common bugs that people get when they start doing animation. Why does this particular rectangle not move? Let's take a look. This is our main program loop. It operates about 20 times per second. I can tell that right here because I've got the 20 times per second limit going on. Every time through this loop, I am setting rectx right here to 50. I draw it at 50, I add one, so that rectx is now 51, I go back through this loop, come down here, and reset x back to 50. Because I have this inside the loop, rectx, that rectangle, is never going to move from its current location. The fix for that is to take it up outside of the loop so that it only operates once. One of the most common mistakes in doing animation is to take the initial position that you want an item and put it inside the loop and have it continually reset 20 times per second back to that initial location. When you create a variable, when you create an initial position, you need to have it outside the loop or some sort of trigger that controls exactly when that happens. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to take rectx equals to 50 here, do a control x, move it up here, and control V to paste it, unindent it, and we'll see if this works any better. And there we go. I've got a rectangle moving 20 pixels per second, approximately. We can see that's not exactly very fast. 
How would I get that rectangle to move faster? Well, that's pretty easy. All I need to do is go down in here, and rather than adding one, I could add five. That should get it to run five times faster. And there we go. I got a rectangle moving five times faster. Is it perfect? Well, not exactly. It slides right off the end of the screen, so I've got a bit more work to do if I want to get a bouncing rectangle to happen. Before I make a bouncing rectangle though, let's fancy this up a bit. I'm also going to create a rect y. And down here, I'm going to change the y coordinate. And I'm going to move, let's make this three. Now, if I add to the Y location, it's going to move that rectangle not just to the right, but it'll also move it going down. It'll still slide off the screen. I haven't gotten the bouncing part working yet, but I have managed to get that rectangle to move in both the X and Y directions. If I want to get the rectangle to bounce, I'm not going to get it to bounce by always having it move exactly five pixels to the right and three pixels down. I am going to need to be able to change the direction it's moving. And to do that, I'm going to create yet another two variables. I'm going to call these variables rect change x and rect change y. I'm going to set the x equal to five like I had before and the y equal to three. This complicates what we're working with, and I'm just going to point out here, this is the position of a rectangle. This is the vector, or you can also call it the direction and speed. of our rectangle. A common mistake is to accidentally mix the two up. If you want to change the direction that the rectangle is moving, a mistake would be to change this instead of this. This covers the direction, so if you're going to change the direction, you want to mess with this. If you want to change the position, then you mess with these two variables. Keep in mind, they're very different variables, so that we want to pick which of these that we're actually looking for changing. I'm going to take the 5 that I've got down here and add that. Now if I run it, it should operate just like it did before, but I'm getting ready for being able to support the bouncing. Indeed, it's running just like it did before. I'm not bouncing yet, but I'm getting closer to being able to support that. Now as I'm looking at supporting the ability to bounce, I'm taking a look at these lines right here and I see that this actually has nothing to do with drawing. All code to draw should go below this comment. What I've actually got here is game logic, where things are. I'm going to take this and move it up here into the game logic. Games work a lot better and programming is a lot easier if you separate out the drawing from the logic behind what happens in the game. If you mix the two up, then things can get to be kind of confusing. So I'm going to take these two lines, control X, and move it up into the game logic. Now I want to bounce the rectangle on the screen. And the way I do that, I want to figure out if the rectangle has managed to hit the edge of the screen. So I need an if statement, if, and I want to look at if the position of the rectangle is at the edge. So I want rect X, and how big is my screen? I've got a width of 500 up here, it looks like. Or, excuse me, I've got a width of 700. Height of 500. So, if rect x is greater than 700, then I want to take the direction that it's moving and flip it. So, how do you take a number, like 5, and make it into negative 5? Well, that's easy enough. I'm just going to take rect x and multiply it times negative 1. So if it's 5, it'll be negative 5. If it's negative 5, it'll be 5. I could just set it equal to 5, 
but then if I set it equal to 5, I wouldn't be able to adjust the speed. Right here, if I have this at 10 and I multiply it times negative 1, it's still going to be going from 10 to negative 10, and this will not mess it up. And it works a lot better than if I just set it to a particular value. Let's go ahead and run this. My rectangle is moving towards the edge of the screen, and oh, it didn't bounce. What's going on? Well, let's figure out what's going on. I've made two mistakes, and a pretty common mistake, so I wanted to make sure to point them out. I have multiplied rect x times negative 1. Rect x is the position of the rectangle, not its direction. What I wanted to multiply was the direction that it was moving. I need to multiply rect change x, not rect x. This is one of the more common mistakes that people make when they start doing animation. So I'm going to go in here and make this rect change x and see if I get any closer. Okay, rectangle is moving across the screen. Is it going to bounce when it hits the edge? It kind of did, but the rectangle mostly slid off the edge of the screen. Why is that? Consider that when the rectangle is right here, which is where we want it to bounce, the position that we're storing the rectangle, remember we start drawing the rectangle the upper left corner. So this is the XY of the upper left corner. The width of our window is 700 pixels. If we check for an X of 700, this rectangle is actually going to have slid all the way off before this position right here gets to 700. What I actually want to check is with a width of a rectangle that has a width of 50, I want to check to see if this is at 650, right? And if I want to even be more exact, this is actually numbered 0 to 699. So I want to check to see if this is 649 because we're zero based. So let's modify that. And does our rectangle bounce properly at the bottom? And indeed it does. I need it to bounce both now on the Y direction. Then I can change rect change Y. Oops, this should be multiplied. Now it should bounce off that, not only the right hand side, but the bottom as well. And there we go, we got it bouncing off both of those particular sides. Not done yet because it's going to slide right off the left edge, because I never checked for the left and top. I can do that here by expanding up my if statement, rect x is less than 0. So we're looking to see if rect x is greater than 649 or less than 0. If it is, we will reverse direction. And here is less than 0. Now it should bounce on all four sides. Great, we got it bouncing off the right. We got it bouncing off the bottom. Will we get it bouncing off the left side? Yes, and will we get it bouncing off the top? Great, we now have an animated bouncing rectangle. Before we stop though, I want to point out a few things. A common mistake is instead of this, to use an equals. You don't want to do that because note when rect x changes, it's going to be changing by fives. So it might be at 645, and then go to 650, and never hit 649. So when checking boundaries, you always want to use greater than, less than, or you could use greater than or equal, less than or equal to. But don't check for an exact value because it might actually skip right over that.